So here I have a 10 microsecond pulse that has the repetition rate of 100 microseconds on the screen. And I've set the rising and falling edges of the pulse to be 100 nanoseconds. So here the memory depth uh, is 262 kilopoints. But we can go into the acquisition menu and reduce the memory depth um, so that we just capture one pulse on the screen. And I've set the um, sampling rate to 200 mega samples per second because uh, this is sufficient to capture the uh, frequency content of this pulse. Now you can zoom in horizontally. a much smaller time scale. And uh, the reason why you want to zoom in is because you get a better, a much more accurate measurement uh, since the scope can see more detail of the waveform. But you can see that one of the measurements, or two of the measurements, cannot be done because um, the period measurement is looking for two pulses, but we don't have two pulses on the screen. We only uh, had the memory depth for one pulse. And then the width measurement is looking for the falling edge, but it's outside of the memory. We can fix the width measurement by increasing the memory depth. And it looks like 65. So it looks like 32 kilopoints is the minimum. Okay, so the period measurement even turned on because the memory depth was large enough to capture the other two pulses. And even if you don't see it on the screen, the pulses are still there in memory. They are outside of this white square window here. This white square represents what you see on the screen. So if you scroll it using this uh, time offset, you see the uh, other pulses on the screen. So that's how you would set it up. Um, of course, this current thing doesn't display because the markers used to measure the rising, falling, or the width measurements are not on the screen, they're off screen. So you only get this mean measurement and the count does increase. This count here is uh, the measurements made on the newly acquired pulses, and it's continuously running right now, so it, that's why it's increasing. So when you make measurements um, off the screen, you want to make sure you set it up to measure all data. Otherwise, it'll just measure what's on screen. So you see, if I deselect that, all these measurements are zero. So here I went ahead and set up a few measurements and I zoomed in on that one pulse. So I set my memory depth to 65 kilopoints. 
and uh, these measurements do not require more than one pulse to be there. So rise time, fall time, pulse width, V peak to peak, um, V average, and DC V RMS. And then I've also turned on the markers for this rise time uh, measurement to show you how the measurement is done. So what the scope does is it looks in memory, looks for a rising edge, puts on these cursors, and that's how it measures the rise and fall time. And because this uh, measurement is still on screen, you can see it here. But if I zoom into 10 microseconds, or 10 nanoseconds, um, the scope doesn't see the full rising edge, so it doesn't show the current value, but it's still making the measurement and updating it. So that's how you would make measurements on um, the very small details of a pulse. When the pulse width is large, you want to make sure your acquisition um, sampling rate and memory depth is set for your particular pulse. Um, you don't want to put this to automatic because it's going to go up to 2 giga samples. It will use too much memory and therefore won't capture the whole pulse on the scope. And using segmented mode will help, um, especially if you want to reduce the time it takes to capture your waveform and also to reduce blind time. But the thing is, the maximum number of segments is this value right here. So if you want to capture more of these pulses at a single time uh, without uh, missing any pulses, you cannot use segmented mode. And um, yeah, finally, I'll show you how to create a histogram on the measurement. So we go to math. Oh, sorry, we go to analyze. And then you can select um, the histogram to be on the measurement. So it's selected rise time. Let me turn it on. So let's minimize the markers. And as you can see, the histogram uses the same count as the measurement. And it's building the histogram based on these measurement values that it captured. So I skipped ahead, and this is what the histogram looks like after a thousand measurements. You see it's having a much better Gaussian looking shape, which is what we expect. Um, so yes, that's how you would build a histogram of a measurement. However, the only problem that we see here is the update rate, which means that the scope has a uh, lot of date ti dead time. Um, between capturing a new pulse. Uh, the update rate is about 2 hertz right now, so it's every 500 milliseconds it's updating the screen. Um, and I'll show a screenshot of a different scope that shows the trigger out of this particular scope. And I'll show you how often it updates the screen. So to improve the update rate, there's two things you can do. One, you can reduce the memory depth. So let me show show you that. Let's go back to 65. And the acquisition. Yeah, and the other thing that you can do is turn off the sine x over x interpolation. So uh, 
queues where we were just now. The update rate was uh, 500 milliseconds or two, hertz, two waveforms per second. Now when I change the memory depth to 32 kilo points, it increases the update rate, but um, it's still in the yeah 250 to 300 milliseconds. Then now if I turn off interpolation, the update rate increases even more and it's down to 20, 20 milliseconds or so.